This video is part of Consumer Theory. In it, I will discuss preferences, specifically preference relations and properties of preferences. Do remember that preferences are only part of what goes into consumers' decisions. Consumption decisions do depend on preferences, but they also depend upon budget constraints. In a different video, I present budget constraints. For now, we are going to think solely about what consumers like or want without regard to what they can afford. We know that consumers have taste or preferences for goods and services that in part guide their choices of what to consume. How might we quantify these tastes and preferences? Well, one way is in terms of dollars or in monetary terms. For example, we might say that what a good is worth to someone is the highest price that they're willing to pay for it. Another way for us to quantify preferences is through rankings. And that's the way we're going to use an Econ 410. Goods are going to be ranked according to how much pleasure consumers derive from consuming them. These rankings are something that we're going to describe both graphically and mathematically. Rankings might be described by a strict preference relation. That is, given two bundles, A and B, we define a strict preference relation as follows. For an individual, we say that bundle A is strictly preferred to bundle B if and only if the person likes A more than B. For example, look at these two bundles of candy. On the left, we've got a lot of the sugary kinds of candies. One of my all-time favorites, Fun Dip. We've also got some gummy bears and Sour Patch Kids, which I adore. And then on the right-hand side, we have some, you know, chocolate kinds of treats here. We've got Hershey's bars, Kit Kats, Snickers, Chips Ahoy cookies. We all have different preferences over these two bundles of candy. For me, I prefer, like most eight-year-olds, <laughs> not that I'm eight, but my, my preferences seem like they are, I prefer the bundle of candy on the left. So I would say that the sugary bundle is strictly preferred to the chocolatey bundle. Other rankings might fall into the category of indifference relation. That is, given two bundles, we define an indifference relation denoted with this symbol as follows. For an individual, A is indifferent to B if and only if this person likes the two equally. She or he is indifferent between them. For example, some of you might looked at these two bundles of candy and concluded that you would have been just as happy with either, and so you would be indifferent between them. There are three properties of preferences that we usually assume hold true. The first two we will always assume hold true in this class, and the third we will sometimes relax. I will explain each one. The first is called completeness. Completeness says that when facing a choice between two bundles of goods, like bundle A and bundle B, a consumer can rank them so that either they strictly prefer A to B, or they strictly prefer B to A, or they are indifferent between A and B. Note that completeness does not mean one is always better. It just means you are able to rank two bundles. You never say, I don't know how I feel. You might say, I know how I feel and I like them equally well. The second property that we will always assume it holds true is called transitivity. We assume transitivity so that preferences follow a logically consistent pattern. For example, if we strictly prefer A to bundle B and B to bundle C, then it should follow that we strictly prefer A to C. For example, I strictly prefer Sour Patch Kids to Swedish Fish. And I strictly prefer Swedish Fish to M&Ms. By the property of transitivity, it then follows that I strictly prefer Sour Patch Kids to M&Ms. Again, we will always assume that preferences are complete and transitive. We call this rational. Now, I do acknowledge that preferences are not always rational. People act irrationally all the time. And in fact, there's a branch of economics called behavioral economics that addresses this. We'll look at an example or two in class. 
The third and final preference property that we will assume most of the time, but sometimes relax, is the assumption that more is better. This is also called non-satiation or monotonicity. My favorite economics professor in college called this the pig principle. What this says is that all else the same, more is better than less. For example, three bags of Sour Patch Kids is strictly preferred to only one. In this regard, we can distinguish between a good good and a bad good. A good good is something for which more is better. A bad good is something for which less is better. We'll explore those in class.